Coach Toby Heave of North Penn running Mustangs. And so we were just talking off the air and kind of laughing our head off. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe that should be the show. Um, That's right. You know, but uh, there's a lot to talk about this week. I spoke with a couple of coaching friends of ours earlier today, and they were kind enough to say that they would join the program tonight. So we will be talking with Coach Travis Day momentarily. Uh, Coach uh, Day is at New Matter County Central, where, of course, every year they host the Riverbend Classic. And uh, then we're going to talk with Coach Brandon Blankenship. His team is uh, going to be one of the better 1A teams in the state. And they are also getting ready to kick off down at the Riverbend, or not the Riverbend, at the current River Shootout in Van Buren. Right. So a lot of lot of basketballs getting started. I know your your JV kids have already started. So uh, how you feeling about this week? You know, first of all, it's Thanksgiving, but then also uh, that that's also when everything's getting started with basketball. Yeah. Uh, you know, like we we said before practice started, it's the best time of the year, and right now is when the the best time of the year just gets better because now we're playing games, and it seems like everywhere you turn your head, there's a shootout or or there's a tournament, there's a lot of basketball to go watch and a chance to go to, you know, one or two spots and watch a lot of different teams, see a lot of different players, and, um, you know, it's exciting right now. Yeah, this, this is always um, – Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, absolutely my favorite, because, number one, uh, it's <clears throat> it means basketball starting. But That's it's right. also kind of that – we always open our season at the Oran Tournament, so – the, that was the Monday after Thanksgiving, right? So it was right. We, you know, when I was coaching at Bell City, we hosted a JV tournament, and then other schools I coached at, we were in some kind of a JV tournament the week of Thanksgiving. And yeah. And you kind of had to catch your breath, and then varsity is going to start up on Monday. Time right, so, yeah, right around the corner. So yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I love this time of year, and I know there are a lot of tournaments around the state, like the Arcadia Valley tournament. That's a big one every year. I know there's a lot of basketball going on up here in central missouri and they're getting started over in st louis and other places as well so i'm looking forward to talking some basketball with people tonight yeah and and what two great people to talk to basketball about two two of the better coaches in the area a couple of great programs and uh talk about two of the better shootouts in the in the area too yeah new madrid the one down there this year uh i believe loaded Vashon's coming back i mean so that's yeah be there be for a day that's going to be awesome. And then, um, you know, of course, Charleston should be really good again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, that you know, I, does Charleston play the Sean? Uh, I believe that's who they play the second day. I'll yeah. double check, but I think you're right. That's going to be a lot of fun. So, well, we'll, uh, we'll try to get Travis on here real quick. So, bear with me. Charleston versus Sean, Saturday at 1 p.m. Wow. Carroll, right. Illinois, a couple, couple good ones here. This may put you on hold while I call him. This is the beauty of live, uh, whatever this is, radio. We just make it up as we go. Whatever it is. Okay, hold on one second. Let's see here. Um, And then also in the background of this, my phone is just exploding because I became an overnight... Twitter sensation. I'm a political expert now, by the way, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get him on the phone here. Never lost. Coach, what's going on? Man. Coach, how you doing? Ah, uh, man, just pulled up in the driveway. See, I was right on time. Right on time. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the river bend. Uh, Toby, Toby's on the phone with us. And yeah, I'm here. We um, we were just talking about how good the lineup is this year. Oh, it's going to be an awesome lineup. Uh, you know, as a coach and as a fan i'm waiting on that for sean charleston game myself I, yeah. I mean, that's gonna be a, a, a big time game with big time players yeah that 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 is definitely going to be the marquee uh matchup i think a lot of people are excited for that one who, who are some of the other good groups in in uh the tournament or in the, the river bend this year and also how's your bunch looking 
Well, uh, you know, one of the, some of the marquee teams, you know, West Memphis, they bring a quality team uh, every year. They they come to the River Bend, uh, Covington out of Tennessee. They always going to bring a bunch of, of athletes. Uh, you know, then our, our, our local teams, you know, uh, Charleston, uh, Kennedy, and Scott County, uh, and then ourselves. Like, you know, for us, it's going to be a good learning tool for us being a, a young team and a new team. Um, it kind of just give us something to work with where we see what we need to work on, where, what kid can do what. So that's what I always like about the River Bend. Uh, it's not really about wins and losses for us. It's just to give us a, a little – a little thing we can mark on just to see where we at right now. Yeah, I, I think it's it's just a great event uh, every year. You know, you know you're going to go down and see really good teams play. Uh, but then also just the format, the way it's kind of stretched out over two days, and uh, you know, a lot of people are home because it's the holidays. I, I always enjoy coming down there and just getting to see people you haven't seen in a while. Uh, so I mean, it's just a, it's a terrific thing you, for the people out there listening. If you get a chance to go down and watch it, if you've never done it before, uh, trust me, it's worth the drive to go down there to the matter and watch some basketball. Coach, talk a little. And bit. you you say that me me and uh and and Todd Richards, we were talking about that at the news, like how it's people who have no ties to any of the teams. That's right. That would slide over and come watch basketball for a weekend. That's that's right. I remember. Uh, a couple years ago, I was down there, and I saw Coach McFerrin. And, you know, he was – at this time, he was still a principal over in Tennessee. And I hadn't seen him in like a year. And when I saw him sitting there, but you know, beside the court, he just come over and give me the biggest hug, and I hadn't seen him in forever. So, you know, it's just things like that where you, you bump into somebody you hadn't seen in a while, and uh, it's just – it's a great thing. So, uh, I was going to ask you, one thing that's interesting to me about your team this year is, you know, without, I don't know your players – really well but i know you've come off of probably about five or six or seven years of having a really good guard you went from jimerson to javarkas and you know it, that's that's always a, a big hole to fill on your team how is that going for you you know it, it, it's, it's gonna be rough for us uh we're as coaches we're teaching a whole lot more than we have in the past just because we always had that that point guard that can put everybody in the right spot uh, so now, you know, now only teaching our point guards how to play basketball and, and, and get everybody in the right spot, we got to also teach everybody else how to get in those right spots. So uh, I always tell everybody, you know, years like this will make you good coaches because it, it makes you go back and teach every phase of the game. So that's, that's my own challenge for myself to make sure that I'm teaching every phase of the game and, you know, not putting it all on a, on a new young point guard. That's a, that's a terrific point, and, uh, you know, I had a, a really good guard of my own back in the day. I've had a few of them, but uh, when I coached Dom Johnson, uh, we always had other good guards go with him. But his senior year, I remember one day in practice, we ran our offense a certain way with him. And whenever we were practicing one day, he got a really bad cramp in his calf muscle. He used to cramp up sometimes in, his, in just one particular calf. And so when he went down in the middle of practice, we were scrimmaging our JV. You know, being a 1A school, we had to scrimmage our JV just to kind of get some practice. And I noticed that we were not able to really run our offense the same way. Not, I mean, not even remotely the same way without him. And so kind of on the fly, I envisioned in my head, what are we going to do if he fouls out or, God forbid, he would get hurt or something like that. And so it completely had us kind of revamp some of the things we were doing in our offense in case he went out. So I can relate completely to what you're saying. And then, Toby, I know you and I have talked about this because you're in a situation right now where you don't have a two-point guard. Right. So Yeah, uh, well, you know, Coach Day and I are actually in a, a really similar situation as far as the way our team's made up. We're both going to be young. I've got to talk to him, and I just kind of – know the personnel of his team, those those kids that he's got as sophomores. I actually got to coach as eighth graders. So I try to keep up with those guys um, a little bit when I can. And he doesn't have any seniors, I believe. I've got one that didn't even play last year. We're both really young. and um, You know, so, Coach, for me, you know, uh, going to the river bend like we were talking about is really exciting because you get to see all these good teams at the beginning of the year and a lot of talent at the beginning of the year. And I remember when I, I would go to it while I was in high school to watch and 
and uh, David and I would sit there and, and we'd watch New Madrid play, and they didn't look like New Madrid would at the end of the year. Nobody's playing as good as they do their first game as they do at the at the end. But you know, a school like New Madrid, a lot of times you're just coming off football. You guys don't, you know, y'all's practice time is a, a little bit different than everybody else's. Where I say you guys don't get as much. And then you're, you're thrown right into it with, you know, you're going to go play some tough, tough teams with a lot of size and athleticism. What are your expectations going into these first couple of games? Like, you know, I know you want to compete and play hard. Kind of how do you see your guys looking and playing against these guys? You know, I, I, I'd take the river band for me. It kind of like, like the NBA and like how I take it as my exhibition game. Yeah. Uh, you know, you first, you know, the thing you want to make sure you're doing. Is, is playing hard. You know, I always say as a coach, there's four things that you got to be able to control, and that's, that's defending, that's re- rebounding, that's effort, and taking care of the ball. So, yeah, yeah I'm I'm looking on that aspect, and, you know, there, there's my plus and minus chart, and uh, that's how I'm grading everybody. Who who can I trust that's going to try to play hard, you know, rebound the ball, take care of the ball, and you know, and then try to do what we're coaching. So that's how I take those two games because you know it's been in the past that you know we played against some teams top ranked team in the yeah. country, you know, and so you just want to see who's going to get out and battle for you in situations right. like that. And I think your guys, and, and maybe it's because it's their kind of showcase event there at the school. They always come out and, and they're ready. They're up to play these games and. Even last year when, you know, I don't think y'all were as talented as some of the other teams there. You came out and really fought and battled and competed against those guys. So, I think your guys really come out to play those first couple games for sure. That's a really good question. And, and, you know, just to kind of piggyback that comment, Coach, do your kids, you know, growing up at New Madrid and going to those games as kids, is that something that they really look forward to growing up is, you know, being part of the tradition? I think so, just because, you know, it, it, it usually draws pretty good crowds there. And so it's one of those, you know, everybody's going to come out and watch the games, and, and it's games all day long. So I think our guys enjoy playing in it too. I know uh, just from my own personal kind of standpoint, I did when I, I got to play in it as a junior and a senior in high school. And I can remember probably being somewhere fifth or sixth grade. And uh, around this time of the year, I'm at the mall with my parents in Cape, and I see a bunch of, you know, really big guys walking through the mall, and they're all in super nice uh, Nike travel suit gear, and we didn't know who it was. Well, my dad got to looking at them, and it was Deshaun's high school basketball team. And I'm like, well, what are they doing down here? And that's when I learned what the Riverbend was, because he was telling me about it. And uh, there was a thing later that year, Deshaun was – you know, at that time, one of the best teams in the nation. They had Jimmy McKinney and um, I can't remember what. The, 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 yeah, all of those. All oh, they yep. were good. Uh, they they, they were loaded on, that year. They had a yeah. thing on TV, a documentary I watched. So from that point on, to me, the River Bend became a big deal, and I got to go play in it. And it was, you know, that was like playing in a, a state championship almost at the beginning of the year instead of the end of the year. It's just humongous games to get up for and go play and. You know there's going to be a great crowd and a lot of people there to watch it. So it's really exciting to be a part of. And you say that, you know, it, it, it fans are like that too. Uh, yeah. Maybe it might have been a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I met Walmart with my wife, and, and a guy stopped me. And he just started talking about the River Bend and asked me what, what teams, you know, are going to be in it. And then I, I walk away from the conversation. My wife's like, hey, who's that? I'm like, I have no <laughs> idea. He, he started talking about the River Bend and asked me questions, and I just started talking about let them know who's all coming in the matchup. And, you know, and so you, I always get that all the time that, you know, people just, you know, don't have any ties to any team, but just right. kind of come watch some basketball for a, a two days and, and they come on out. That's a great story. That's, that's so good. And, you know, I, I can remember I'm so excited Deshaun's coming back. Uh, I think that adds a whole different flavor to the River Bend because so many years they are the best – team in the state at least in their class yeah and so when you you know it's one thing to bring in like we know how good west memphis is because we follow you know coaching and basketball but a lot of missouri fans are not as familiar whereas they kind of have to be familiar with Deshaun because we know they may end up playing saxon or something like that Mm -hmm. and so i remember coming down there and 
when Coach Irons was the coach, uh, Floyd Irons, the dad, was the coach, they ran a lob play for a dunk. If you played them a 2-3 zone, they had this set play that they would run off the tip. And, Toby, you know this is a true story because yep. I ran it with Daryl Monroe when I had Daryl. I, I only ever had one kid that could go get it like that. <laughs> so I, I stole that play from Floyd Irons because I went and watched him play like two or three years in a row. And the first time they did it, I was like, wow. Then the second time when I saw him do it, I kind of – remembered that play in my mind i was like that's something that that was planned you know what i mean that was not a a fluke kind of a thing and so uh but just watching his teams and how hard they played when they would come down there man they were something to watch so i'm really glad that they're back in it i think that's a great pickup yeah for guys. you know yeah you kind of like me that that we all loved watching for sean because they were so disciplined so disciplined. You know, it, it, I mean, yeah. they were different from the time they walked in the gym to the time they left. So you know, they walked in all organized, all dressed alike. And, and I mean, even when they got on the court, mm-hmm. it was, you know, it was all the same. So they caught your eye because they always seemed like they were doing the right thing, and, you know. And, and so and that's the thing that I tell people about Floyd Irons. You can say whatever you know, all the things about the recruitment and everything else. People can say whatever they want. I remember coming to watch them play and a kid missed a layup. And there was a buzzer. You know, it was a sub coming in. And that kid, Coach, he came out of the game. He ran to the end of the bench, and he did 20 sit-ups without being told. Like, he knew. He missed the layup. He was in trouble. He knew what he had to do to go back in the game. And it's like you said, just their attention to detail and how hard they played was phenomenal. Like, they played so hard. They were not just one of those teams getting by on talent alone. Right. And so, yeah, I, I think yeah. I think it's great that they're coming back. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome watching them in Charleston because you know myself, I, I think Charleston and Sison have yeah. a chance to have a, have special years. Uh, and I'm sure Sison's gonna be looking at that too. To, exactly. Uh, oh yeah, I'm sure they're gonna be. And there. with you know, Sison knows that um, Deshaun had some good young players sitting on the end of the bench that didn't even get in last year when they played each other. Well, and, and then Joe uh, Reese Joe, moved, Joe Reese moved to East St. Louis. So, and to me, that was probably Rashawn's best player. That's a six, seven, six, eight kind of swing forward that can do a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's. I mean, I think you're going to see a lot of red and black in that gym, even though their team's not playing. So, oh yeah, so it's going to be exciting. Well, Coach, I'll uh, I'll let you go. We're going to get Brandon on here next, and so, uh, but I do appreciate you taking a minute to talk with us. Yeah. Uh, no problem. You know, I love talking to Coach. Me. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this again. All right, take care. Take care, guys. Good luck to you. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Bye bye. All right. And that was uh, that was Coach Travis Day. So now that should uh, you know, if we didn't hype up the Charleston Bashan matchup man. enough, that's another person right there. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a battle. Gonna I'm be telling a, you. I'm telling you. I can't wait. So they're gonna to get after each other. Charleston won't back down from anybody, and they've got a. a one of the, in my opinion, better teams I've had in the last few years. I agree. And uh, my advice to them is uh, when it comes to trying to, to beat a team like Deshaun. It's about winning one-on-one battles. It's about winning. It's about winning. Battles. That's right. It's about winning one-on-one battles. Okay, we're going to get Brandon on here. He's, he's uh, expecting our call. So let me pull him up here in the Rolodex. You still operate with one of those things? No, it's a joke. Oh, okay. okay. I just want to make sure. Hello? Hey, Coach. We're, hey. We're, we're live on, uh, on Just Win Today. How's it going? Hey, great, man. How are you? I'm doing good. We're we're talking basketball. I'm sitting here watching a little football on TV, and so life is good right now. Good deal. Good yeah. deal. Toby on there, too? Toby's I'm here, team. Coach. Hey, what's up, Toby? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? Hey, I'm all right, man. All right. I just I went and played a little open gym tonight for the first time in about Ooh. six months, so I'm I'm hurting a little, but you just know, wait till tomorrow. You know, Coach, that uh, brings up a funny story, uh, and Toby Toby's going to laugh while I try to tell this, but – I go work out most Saturday mornings. I go work out at the rec center here in Columbia. And on I swear to you, on Saturday morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, there's already guys in there full court scrimmaging, two courts. Yeah. 
and then you got a lot of doctors in there, a lot of older guys in there, and then you you know you got some other guys that you can tell they play. So yeah. I was in a bad car wreck. Half of my body is screwed back together. I You've never told that story I'm before. Not, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not trying to you know sprain an ankle or anything. You know, like so my playing days are over. I might go in there and shoot. But I'm watching these guys and I'm sizing them up and I'm like, man, I'm telling you, I could get out there and play with these guys. You know, I'm I'm yeah. I'm better than half of them. I could get out there and play. So finally Saturday morning, I said, you know, I'm gonna take my shoes with me. I'm gonna go out here and play. Coach, I showed up to play this morning. There was one guy that was a Division One point guard in his former, <laughs> former days. There was a six seven guy. There's, I mean, I, there were players all over the gym. So I text, I told Toby, I said, I'm gonna go play this morning. I'm gonna go in there and play. So uh, so I go I go play. First of all. And, and this is, you know, as we know, there are certain racial stereotypes in America. I'm yeah. one of the only white guys in the gym. I yeah, did, of I course. Did not, I did not get picked early, okay? I did not get yeah. picked. And so I had to sit and wait a couple of games. So when I finally did get in there and play, it just didn't go the way I wanted to go. I didn't play bad, you know. But I told Toby, I texted him after she said, how did it go? I said, man, I can't play anymore. I, I suck. <laughs> hey, and, and my response was, it didn't take you playing against those guys to realize that. To figure that out. Never play against those guys. I've got I've got former coaches that would argue whether I could ever play in the first place. You know. So, but uh, but anyway, so yeah, you know, I always tell people I'm the same age as Kobe Bryant. We're like nine days apart, and so if yeah. if Kobe had to hang him up, you know, I think it just might be time. It's, for it it, it, it might, might be time. It may be yeah. time. So, so, coach, tell us about your team. How are they looking so far? Well, um, we have. Oh, look at, Coach, hold on, I'm going to get my pen ready. I'm, okay, you're going to. First scout, yeah. scout report right now. Free, free <laughs> scout report. Tigers. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to tell the opposite of everything we really do. <laughs> there you go. So. There you go. <laughs> now, uh, you know, we, we really like our team. We like the guys that we're bringing back. Uh, we lost some good seniors last year, um, three three senior starters. Uh, um, Drew Fortner being our big guy in the middle. He was all-conference first team and all-district and uh, – you know, Drew was just a great kid, hard worker, great leader. Um, he was six four, and uh, you know could score around the basket with either hand. And so that, you know, losing that big presence in the middle is tough. And then our two other seniors were great role players, Tony Green and uh, and Ethan Pipkin. Mm-hmm. So uh, and and those guys were really the, our leaders last year. I mean, they were they were the most just consistent, you know, mentally, emotionally guys coming in and, and working hard every day. And uh, they kind of set the tone this year, but. As far as production, uh, the guys that are coming back, of course, we bring back Nathan Burnett, who's uh, you know, who was all all district and all conference, and um, our our point guard and our our main scoring option um, averaged about 20, 20 points a game last year. He, he hit eighty seven threes his freshman year, and then he hit eighty seven again last year as a sophomore. So uh, you know, it's always nice when you got guys that can shoot the ball, you know, like that. And uh, he makes a lot of things happen, makes a lot of good decisions for us. Um, and Morgan Ludwig is just kind of a horse. Um, he's, uh, he's he's grown a little bit. He's about 6'2 now and uh, just strong and uh, works hard. And, and Morgan and Nate play um, play uh, on an AAU team, uh, the Missouri Mavericks. Uh, Jim Jones, I don't know if you guys know him, but uh, Jim does a good job with that team. And, and they went and played all summer. They probably played 50 or 60 games this summer on top of what we did. You know, so uh, so those guys have, have played a ton. And then last year, we kind of filled out our roster then, our varsity roster with guys, you know, like six, seven, eight, nine were all sophomores that uh, factored in a lot. And, uh, you know, guys like E.J. Meyer, Garrett Young, James Rydell, Tristan Meese, those guys are now juniors. And so, I mean, they're, they're all a little bit bigger. They're all a little bit stronger. They've got, uh, you know, they've got some varsity experience too. So uh, we're just not real super deep. Um, as a team, we only have 11 guys on the team. But I got to check in, <laughs> got to check in the other day the the high school enrollment because I'm, I'm elementary principal, so I'm not really over there all the time. And uh, I checked their high school enrollment. We have 19 boys in the entire <laughs> high school. <laughs> so we have we have 11 guys on the team out of 19. So that's wow. that's pretty good percentage. That's really good. good for you. That's amazing. I mean, that's just and you know like not to shift gears completely here i want to talk about basketball not politics but i've spent Uh-oh. most of the last week uh dealing with this charter school stuff you know i live yeah. a lot closer to the state capitol and i was in meetings at jefferson city on thursday and friday and i'm going back on tuesday to another meeting 
and with what the governor is trying to do with the state board right now, and they're trying to get rid of the commissioner, and they're wanting to right. bring in more charter schools, and basically part of that is going to be to try to shut down smaller schools. Yeah. And so just kind of what you just said, 19 boys in a high school, there are a lot of people out there that go, oh, just shut that school down. you know. But what people don't understand is it's not that easy. It's not like you can just pick all those kids up and be closer to another school. You know, right. it's it's pretty remote location, like in a Prairie Home or a Risco or a Wardell. Mm-hmm. It's you know, yeah. you, you don't want to have kids riding a school bus an hour and a half, two hours just to get to school. You know. Yeah. And so uh, I think a lot of people are doing a lot of really good things in in small schools, and uh, what you just demonstrated is a perfect example. I mean, you got 11 out of 19 kids involved in ba- or boys involved in high school basketball. Where else? Can they say that they're getting that kind of participation rate? That's amazing. All right. I, I tell you where you, you can't say you're getting that at. So uh, that's pretty good. You might need to come recruit my hallways for me. <laughs> I've got about 13 out of 40, 45 boys probably. Yeah. yeah. Which is a good number for us. but. Right. Yeah. And so what, what about the lineup over there at Van Buren this year? You know, who are some of the teams that you're looking forward to seeing over there this weekend, Coach? Well, I think they got a nice setup there on Saturday for sure. I mean, there, there's other good games going on um, on Friday too. Uh, of course, some of our, our conference foes are uh, squaring off there on Friday. I know Gideon's playing against uh, Valley, and uh, Clarkton's playing Winona, which should be a pretty good one. Should be a, should be a good one there because uh, uh, I know Gideon lost quite a bit, but uh, mm-hmm. you know um, Jordan McGowan is he's a young coach and he's he's hungry to. You keep those guys working hard and, and getting better. And then, uh, uh, of course, Jordan Bible at, at Clarkton uh, does a great job. And they, they lost Emmanuel, who, who did a lot for them. But you know that they're going to they're gonna be all out. You know, those guys are going to be going hard. So those are good games. i tell you some, some teams, though, to look out for, really. Uh, Neelyville is over there Friday night. and uh, we, we saw Neely- their JV the other night, and they've got some talent. Neelyville got the uh, – they got the three seed for the Bernie tournament. Um, and so we, we could have a potential semifinal matchup, if, you know, seeds, seeds hold out. So, um, you know, they're, they're going to be athletic. They're going to yes. be long and, and athletic. Who, and, uh, it's, uh, Patrick, 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 Patrick Morton. Talking, Patrick. I thought Patrick yeah. was still there. Yeah. And, uh, Patrick does a good job over there. And so they're going to, that, that's going to be, uh, I, I hope that works out. You know, I'd, I'd like to, cause that's teams too, that we don't normally play. Sure. Yeah, you know, and it's good to get in those tournaments, and you don't we don't want to play Hawkeum and you know just teams that we're going to see three or four times. I mean, exactly. already so uh, opportunity to you know play against the Neelyville or Twin Rivers or you know Bernie teams who we don't typically have on our schedule there. So that, that's, um, a, that's a great point you bring up. Uh, not to cut you off, but I know this this hasn't always been there at Van Buren. You know, like the River Bend wasn't always there. Yeah. So as as the scheduling options have changed, and I know you guys have been in the one at Van Buren for a long time, kind of what's your philosophy about trying to schedule games early? You know, I'd say before Christmas. Like, what what's yeah. your goals as a coach as far as making your schedule? Um, you know, really, we just want to play as many tough teams as we can. Um, I don't really care when it is, or um, I just want to try to get as many good games on the schedule. Now, I mean, and it's hard for, for schools like us because there are years when, you know, hey, we talent has cycled through and we've kind of graduated everybody, and you, you build that tough schedule up, and then uh, and then you have a team who's uh, working their tails off, and we went 0-17, uh, you know, just three or four years ago to start the season, and we, we get over in Illinois and we're playing at the – uh, Martin Luther King Classic in uh, at Meridian, and uh, uh, we played. I think we were playing uh, Egyptian or Century or somebody, and we lost in overtime. And uh, I'm talking to the coach in the hospitality room after the game, and he said, "So, so what's y'all's record?" I said, "Well, man, we ain't won a game." He said, "No, really. <laughs> what's your what's your record?" I said, "0 and 17." And he said, "You're crazy." He said, "If you were over here, you'd be 500 at least." Right. right. You know. So, uh, but. And you know, as athletic director too, that you can't just revamp your schedule in a year either. You know, so so you try to get those tough games, and uh, and so yeah, that that's what that's what we try to do. Um, and then we added this. I like this Van Buren deal because we used to not have a game before we jumped into that Bernie tournament. Right. You know, and and that's such a t- tough tournament. I mean, we're the only class one school in it, 
So it's great, great competition for us. And so the main reason I picked up this Van Buren um, deal was to try to get us a game, you know, before that tournament. So yeah, get our feet wet. I, when I was at Scott County coaching, I got us in the river bend for kind of the same reason. Um, you know, I just know year in and year out, Scott County is probably going to win the Orion tournament. Um, and then, yeah. you know, you got a couple games before Christmas that just traditionally we were going to win. And so it's going to get, you know, especially we had that good group coming with, you know, Bobby Hatchet and Otto Porter and other kids. And so, yeah. you know, get a chance to go see some people that, you know, I always want to try to play somebody that can beat us. That was my right. that was my philosophy. I want to play somebody. If we don't play well, are you good enough to beat us? You know, or yeah. if, or if we do play well, are you good enough to beat us? You know, and so, I mean, because that's the only way you're going to try to figure out those things that you need to work on, is if you get you know tested early. And I think it I think it's a really and Toby and I talk about this a lot. It's a completely different ball game scheduling if you're a boot hill team. I mean, a true boot hill team. Yeah. Then compared to the teams just north of the boot hill, like the Scott County Central or in Advance, their scheduling options are so much greater than yours are. And right. you kind of just hit it on the head like you, you'll end up not, you know, like I remember when I was at uh, Bell City, we played Oran four times in a season. You know, yeah. that, that still does happen up there, but it happens a lot more uh, down there than it does, you know, a little further north. My uh, My very first year. Uh, coaching we played Hawkham five times on the season we at one point we played them three times in nine days oh, yeah. we we played them in the in like the consolation finals of the Bernie tournament on a Friday then we had them regular season on like a Tuesday the following week and then we had them first round of the Clarkton holiday tournament on a Monday it was like a Friday a Tuesday and a Monday oh, yeah. so that was tough and uh, we, we beat them the first four times that we played them, and then they beat us the fifth time, which happened to be the first round of the conference tournament, and we were like the two seed, and they were the seven. So oh. <laughs> that's, that's no fun. That's no fun for you or the kids or the other coach or, or any of those things. Uh, yeah. Real quick, I know, I know uh, the article that came out today, there was a new article that went up on the website talking about this crazy stall game this coach ran. And yeah. I know you read it, and you, you had a comment on there. <clears throat> and, Toby, I know you saw it also. You know, talk a little bit about, you know, first of all, that was it, for people that didn't see it, that what happened is one team is playing the other, you know, one team is a big underdog. And yeah. so what they do is, is they're trying to hold the ball and stall in the first quarter. And they go to the sideline, and they make a little huddle right in front of their coach's bench so nobody can get to the guy with the ball. And they're just kind of handing it back and forth to each other. And the other, you can see the other team looking at them like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you know? So yeah. talk, talk a little bit about that. And I know having, like you said, having had teams that weren't as good or you've had teams that were really good, you've had people try to do that to you before, like where they held the ball on you. Just kind of mm -hmm. talk about your philosophy of all that. Yeah, so uh, given that particular situation and watching that video, um, I don't like that. I mean, that that's not even really – that's that's not basketball at that point, and that's just kind of – I mean, I hate to just go in and, and give up. Right. Now, I do think the, the stall strategy, you know, can, can be effective if you have the right personnel, you have guards that can do it. Um, obviously, you know, in, in your um, article there, you know, you talked about uh, Coach Bidewood at Portersville, and that's that's one of the most famous uh, in exactly. Southeast Missouri, exactly. um, it can be with them right. beating Cardinal, with them beating Cardinal Ritter, exactly. you know. Um, so, um, and we've I've seen it done. I've seen um, probably 2005, maybe um, Clarkton in the district championship game tried to do it to to Scott Central, and it worked really well for a half. I think Rob Harlow was coaching. That's right. At Clarkton, I mean, the first half score was like eight to four. Yeah. I think. Clarkton ended up losing that game by either two or four points. I mean, kept their yeah. right in the ball game. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, David Mathis uh, really tried to do it to us last year um, mm -hmm. in the semifinal game of the district, and it was, uh, yeah. it was, a, it was a close ball game for, for three quarters, you know, and then we kind of got a little bit of separation there. I think ended up winning by 16 or 18 or so. So, I mean, those strategies can be effective. Um, and, it, and it really gets into that time of possession thing. I mean, if you have the ball and you're able to control the ball, the other team can't score. Exactly. You know, and uh, and so if – especially if you're going against a team that likes to push it and likes to, you know, get out and put points up in a hurry. So, um, 
I, the instances I think are rare though when a, when the team stalling actually wins the game. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. they, most times I've ever seen it, they have kept it close, right. but they haven't been able to actually overcome and win. So, um, and I think that's really the question. And, and, Toby, maybe you can jump in on this because I think the question is, are you actually trying to win or are you actually trying not to get embarrassed? And there's a, there's right. a difference. And yeah. if you're, I think if you're trying to build a system that where maybe your kids are still getting better, like I talked about in the story about Coach Dembo at Richland, he was playing a way that if his kids could play that way every night, they would actually get better and, and maybe start winning some games. Yeah. You know, so that that's a good thing. That's a good instance of that. And I know Toby, you were just talking with Travis Day about your team's younger. You don't have necessarily a standout point guard this year. So what do you think about that? Because you may be in some of those kind of situations this year. How much of that do you put on one game? Hey, let's not get blown out compared mm-hmm. to I have to build a program and one day I want to be able to beat people. Yeah. So, well, to me, first of all, I don't like the stall game very much. Um. And I obviously done the the podcast about the shot clock and why I think it would be a great thing to, you know, in a way eliminate that. You could still hold the ball for 25, 30, almost 30 seconds and and try to work for a layup and really run through your offense. But I think there's a difference between stalling to just hold the ball and not give it up and stalling to get a layup or to get a a really close shot. And I think, like Coach Blankship's saying, a lot of times the team that stalls loses, and I think that's because – they don't stall to score. They stall to not give the ball up and to not give the other team a chance to score. Um, and my way of thinking is throughout the course of the season, I don't want to do that because I think we can get better at something if we just keep track. Like, you know, say we're not going to win this game. <clears throat> why would we go out there and try to keep it close by holding the ball to one spot pretty much the whole game versus, hey, we can – you know, treat it like a practice and get better at our offense this game to where it's going to translate later on in the season. And now maybe we're pretty good. Or you can do something crazy, possibly stupid like I did in the districts last year when you're a lesser talented team against somebody like Scott Century who goes on to win the district and one of the better teams in the state and go complete anti-stall and uh, say as soon as somebody (laughs) gets open, jack that thing up and, yeah. Shoot the ball 70 times in one game and make about 10 of them, which is yeah. what we did. But you didn't throw it away. I mean, We but, didn't throw it away. But to your point, if, and kind of what Brandon's saying, if you give them the ball 70 times, then they might beat you really bad. They might. Yeah. So, because you have to make shots now to keep up. Yep. Now, Toby, right. I, do have to, I do have to call you out here because I, uh, I do remember a few years ago in a junior high um, game at Risco. I did. Uh, where you <laughs> held the ball just about the entire quarter. It was. Uh, it, it, so, uh, talk a little bit about that, though. <laughs> my, my main reason for doing that was we had, um, I want to say seven kids that played, really six that played. And that team kind of went with uh, Lee Matney, who, you know, anybody in this area, mainly class one basketball, they all know Lee Matney. He's a junior at Carson now. Yeah, really good, good score. Good he averaged about 32 points a game for us in eighth grade, um, and he had four fouls in the fourth in the third quarter. Which ironically, Nathan Burnett was in three or four fouls in the third quarter. Yeah, and, and we got the ball coming out of the half up by three or four, and uh, you guys were zoning us, and nothing we did was working against the zone that night. So I said, you know what, we're just gonna pull it out. And I'm stubborn enough. That wasn't a thing of I'm going to hold the ball to try to keep you from scoring. It was I'm so stubborn, you're going to come out and guard me man to man, <laughs> or we're just going to stand here and let everybody yell at us for yeah. five six minutes. They were, which is what we did. <laughs> and I, uh, I looked, I looked at the arrow. Um, I can't. Y'all actually had the ball come out half, and we stole it or whatever. We yeah. were up by three or four. Um, the the arrow for the the fourth quarter was going our way. So we we done a little thing. I told I called Lee over to the side while he was dribbling the ball for five minutes, and uh, I said, "Hey, this is what we're going to do." And we actually scored on it. He he drove and kicked, and something yeah. happened. We scored, um, and you guys took it out. And at the buzzer, Braden Jones, who was another really good player on that team, who averaged about twenty five or something, 
uh, he fouled a kid shooting three at half court. So yeah. uh, it, it almost all worked really well. We ended up losing, I think, by three, four, five points. Uh, Lee ended up fouling out of the game on a free yeah. throw block out of all things. I'm like, <laughs> Lee, I saved you for a whole quarter. Without taking <laughs> you out of the game, you still foul out. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, that was one of our early games of the year. And, like I said, that wasn't really to stall. It was to, you know, come out and go sure. to them. And right. you're crazy. Two, two stubborn people. Uh, that was uh, and, Coach Massey. That was Massey, yeah. He, he wouldn't come out. He, You know, I think he knew, like, we're not going to come out and, and guard you man to man. And yeah, I, was, I, was, I, I wasn't going to go against the zone. <laughs> Yeah, I was the principal at Clarkton at the time, and I was not at that game because I was at a. a I think we might have had a game that same night, or something. I don't remember what happened, but uh, the the varsity might have played or, or been practicing. But I got a phone call like, "Yeah, Toby held the ball for a whole quarter," and I said, "He did what?" Like, hey, we we were winning. <laughs> I was like, "He did what?" But no, I I had a, something similar happen to me with Dom Johnson years ago. We were playing Oran, and at this point. This is before we ever won a state title, before we ever did any of those things. And we were run and gun, run and gun, and, and Oran just had this mentality, we'll pack it in, and, and they'll just kind of – like we would beat ourselves. We had yeah. a lead, same kind of a thing, and Mitch yelled out, just stay back, just stay back. And so I looked at Dom and said, just hold it until they come out there and guard you. And I thought they would, they would, you know, 30 seconds they'd come out. They didn't. And so it's kind of like this little game of chicken went on, and it was homecoming night at Bell City. Same kind of a thing, and four minutes go off the clock with Dom standing there dribbling the ball. And <laughs> Mitch, at one point, uh, probably about a minute into this stall, Mitch goes, uh, come out there with four minutes. And I thought, there's no way he's going to sit back there for four minutes and just watch us dribble. Because we were winning. It was the fourth quarter. Yeah. And so, uh, finally, you know, Dom looked at me like, is he being serious? Do I have to stand here and dribble for four minutes? I said, just wait, wait till he comes out there. So with about, I don't know, four minutes and ten seconds, the whole crowd standing up and clapping. And, like, here we go. We're finally about to start playing again. And Dom went around and we got an and one. And, yeah. And I always said that kind of put something in the back of our kids' mind that we could beat them at that game too. Like, if we needed to slow down and play at their pace, that we could beat them. So Yeah. So there's, there's definitely uh, value in both. And so – uh, Coach, we appreciate you joining us. This, there, there is actually a, a time limit on this thing, and so our clock is ticking right now. But I can't wait hey, to, we, to run into you in a gym somewhere. I, I didn't. I'll just real quick just put this plug in. Um, on the Saturday, um, I didn't really talk about the Saturday at uh, mm. at Van Buren because uh, we're squaring off with Dora. Oh, okay. They're so, good. They're really good. Um, yeah, and they're good. Uh, the coach has got triplets. Um oh. Uh, Luna, I think is their, the coach's name, and his triplets, and then this kid named Isaac Haney is, is uh, supposed to be one of the top kids in the freshman class, possibly in, in the state for sure, and maybe even in the nation. So wow. Uh, and then they, and they then you got really good team coming. And then you got Eminence and Advance squaring off that that day too. So some real good, good matchup. Class one matchups there. So wow. a lot of good basketball going on in Saturday in the state of Missouri. Yep. yep. We'll good luck this weekend, Coach. Yeah, good luck Thank you. to you, and, and we'll do this again. All right, appreciate it, okay. guys. Thanks, Brandon. All right, see you. Okay. And so, Tobe, I don't know that, that we can do it any better than that. The, the clock it was pretty is, good. The clock is about to strike midnight. Uh, anything you want to add here in the last minute? Hey, just, you know, get out and watch some basketball. Uh, maybe scout some games for me if you're out there, people, and, and send me some notes if you want. Feel free to do that. I'll take anything. Um, but, no, a lot of good good hoops going on, so get out there and watch it. That's right. And uh, one last thing I'll say, if you don't follow me on Twitter, I am a political expert with over a million views in the last 24 hours. And Self, self-proclaimed. And the world is stupid because it, stuff like that should not get <laughs> Because you're a Twitter expert or a political expert. Stuff like that should not get that much attention, so. Uh, good luck, and I'm sure that I'll run into you this week, Tobe. Yep, we'll see you. Okay. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Check out the website, JWT. <laughs>